Hello, I'm meteorologist Jeff Renner and the host of Sound Conversations at the Seattle Aquarium. And with me is the guest of our next and final Sound Conversation for the year, Linda Mapes, who is a reporter for the Seattle Times. And Linda, you've done a lot of focusing over the last couple of years on the Elwa River, the issues leading up to the removal of the dam, and what we expect afterward. Let's go back to the prehistory, if we will, of the dam. And you view this as an opportunity, a rare opportunity, to right a wrong. How so? Well, the Lower Elwha Clallam tribe has made their home on the Port Angeles waterfront as long as anyone could ever know, 10,000 years, maybe longer than that. They always relied on the fish for their livelihood. And when we industrialized the waterfront of Port Angeles and the Elwha River by building the dams, that killed off the fish that the tribe had always relied on. And it was the tribe that moved first back in 1986 to get those dams taken down. And finally, starting last September, we began taking down the Elwha dams. And that is a way to right a wrong because now those fish are going to come back and they're going to be thick and abundant in that river. And the tribe is once again going to feast on the fish to which they have a treaty right. Now we have tens of thousands of dams in the United States, some of which are a few feet tall. We're talking a much bigger deal here. Tell us about what's involved in removing these dams. Well, this is in fact the very largest dam removal ever anywhere. Most of the dams that have come out, we're talking maybe 10 feet, maybe 20. Let's talk about Elwha Dam. That's 110 feet tall. Let's talk about Glines Canyon Dam, the upper of the two, 210 feet tall. Taking those down is going to take years because they are trapping 24 million cubic yards of sediment. That's enough to fill eight safe cove fields to the roof with sand, rock, cobble, now, Elwha Dam is already gone. It's history. They just knocked it down. Glines Canyon Dam, however, is going to come down bit by bit so that that sediment is very slowly released into the river, sluiced all the way out to the Strait of Juan de Fuca, slowly redistributed through the water of the river, and finally rebuilding the riverbed the way it's supposed to be naturally. So it's a slow process, and it's underway right now. The question that comes up then is, what can we expect and how much of a return to the pre dam con conditions will there be? Well, it'll never be the Eden that it was. However, everywhere above the very lowest parts of the river, the river is going to come back to its original abundance, largely because it was never ruined. And you made an important point, Linda, and that is it's not just about the recovery of the fish. <laughs> this is so much more than a fish story. Everyone talks about the fish because they are so charismatic, the biggest Chinook ever in Puget Sound. These fish can grow to 100 pounds, but once they come back, they're going to feed a whole suite of life some 22 species of animals depend directly on fish for their diet. This is a watershed scale recovery. That's what makes it so special, so much more than fish. It's going to be a fascinating story. You've just had a little snippet of that. So we hope you'll join Linda and me for our sound conversation. And again, that's going to be Thursday, May 3rd at the Seattle Aquarium. The doors open at 7 o'clock. The program starts at 7.30. Please join us. Linda, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Jeff.